greetings, dear viewers. We are happy to welcome you to the international discussion dedicated to the International Online Conference Global Crisis Time for the Truth. On the course of December, millions of people from around the world united in one live broadcast. Twelve hours live broadcast that uncovered the most vital question of our society. 180 countries participated in preparation of this conference. Volunteers from around the world translated this conference to more than 100 different languages because this information that was presented on this conference is vital for all of us. And today, with our honor guest, we will continue to discuss those questions that were raised on the global crisis time. Yes, and uh, I'm honored to introduce our today's uh, guest. It is uh, Huma Kirmani, uh, an author, a FedEx speaker, and member of Amnesty International, member of WWP Amnesty International, uh, the International Women's Writing Guild, honorary member of United Nations in Pakistan. Global Citizen Foundation, Global Union Ambassador uh, of the Office of Pakistan, and uh, winner of Books for Peace Special Award 2020. Uh, then, Deepak Kumar, founder and chairperson of uh, Smiles for Millions Trust in India, and also a Peace Ambassador at the United Nations Peacekeepers Federal Council in India. And, Abu Eleke, a teacher under the and Islamic Education Board from Nigeria. Please welcome. And to start, we would like uh, to ask every one of you the first question that we usually uh, ask our guests uh, in these international roundtables. So, uh, all of you have uh, seen or participated on the conference. So, could you please uh, share your thoughts, your feedback, your Understandings uh, what interests you uh, the most? Why is it important to write such topics? And uh, why is it important uh, not to be silent by speakers? So, if we can start by Uma, that would much appreciate it. Hello, everyone. I'm going to be discouraged and grateful for being invited to be here. As uh, you have introduced me, and I usually speak for the rights of human beings, especially for the rights of women in my country in Southeast Asia and in Germany. Uh, I, I think that we all are uh, equal, there should be no discrimination. And one of my favorite books uh, is by the author. When I read it as a student, when I taught it as a teacher, or being English literature and language teacher, to work with students as well, then I realized that again, what matters is humanity. What matters is that, that we all believe in that we are all one, far, far above the racial, religious discriminations. And we should not, uh, uh, you know, we should not facilitate the feelings of uh, hatred uh, and feelings of uh, uh, being extremist uh, regarding uh, religious feelings, regarding the language, regarding the complexion, regarding the parents, uh, uh, because uh, we all are same and, you know, that this is actually my motive whenever I be uh, call uh, to speak about or to advocate human rights. I'm uh, truly obliged that you have gathered uh, a round conference, a conference to speak for the people who are just suffering in different parts of the world. 
being the victims of the war, being the victims of racial and religious discrimination, being the victims of the extremism. And extremism is nothing, uh, is not only about the religion, it's about the feeling that, you know, that I feel that if someone thinks that I'm better than the other person, that is more about inferiority complex. Rather, you can say that you feel that, okay, I'm superior to the other. Um, I'm living in Pakistan, I'm Pakistan, and, you know, that Pakistan is, uh, uh, is, being subjected to a war which is actually not Pakistan's war. Uh, when the, well, you know, that when Afghanistan was invaded by, uh, by the, you know, the, the army invaded Afghanistan and the war was started. So the people of Afghanistan, they started leaving uh, their homes from Kabul, from Kandahar, from so they started reaching to different parts of Pakistan and they started living in the refugee camps. That has also created, that is, you know, that that is something, a corridor which makes the people to come freely to Pakistan and Pakistan welcome them. Not for the matter of this, that Pakistan had something to show uh, that uh, we, we had nothing uh, to earn from those refugees, but Pakistan played Played in Pakistan has been playing the positive part of the neighbor neighborhood. That is, there are many refugees who are coming from Afghanistan. They are living in the refugee camps, and they are also, you know, now the part of the streamline of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that had made me to write the book because I had come across many refugees who, um, the girls, the women. Uh, the you know the young boys, uh, the beautiful young boys who were having uh, famished bellies. They were not properly dressed in winter, but how they are coping up uh, to you know to survive that uh, uh, that state of uh, uh, refugee, the state of uh, being a refugee in the camps and in the society of Pakistan. Um, as far as uh, these things are uh, concerned, that how we must say war, um, say no to war and terrorism. I think that there is no, uh, uh, after Second World War, uh, there are no new inventions uh, uh, which have uh, blessed the world with technology, with the modern technology, but rather the people that have started making uh, uh, bombs, hydrogen bomb, nitrogen bomb, atomic bombs, the weapons, uh, the rockets, and you know, that even uh, the people, they have started uh, thinking about the Star Wars. Why we are not uh, uh, looking forward, why we are not making more inventions, scientific inventions, uh, why we are not making technology to heal uh, the legends of the two world wars to be the uh, you know the legends of uh, the migration uh, being the refugee uh, being the refugee why we are uh, more uh, into killing the people we all are same we all are human beings far far above our uh, religious beliefs our racial discrimination has to be curbed so um, I have come across many stories of the refugees, the Afghan refugees, and I have uh, written the, the dilemma of the, the Syrian refugees who are living in the different camps and uh, who are traveling from their country to another country. It's not an easy task. Uh, so I think that it's high time that when there should be, uh, you know, a uh, a proper uh, a program of peace. It's nothing like that, but the people, they gather, they talk about it, and after that, you will hear that uh, this has happened in, in, in any part of the world. Why the people are suffering through the, you know, through war and terrorism, it's high time uh, to say no to war. On the other hand, uh, uh, when a war starts in any part of the world, it's not only the war, 
it it it, it starts uh, you know the different things like human trafficking and then slavery as well um and the child labor um so you know that human trafficking is going on around the world then the people they are just talking about the rights of the um you know, transgender right of the you know uh, that is there are many rights so the people say that okay everyone has got the right so why not uh, rights is being given to the people who are the victims of war or the victims of terrorism or the victims of human trafficking unfortunately everyone knows that this is going on and especially in the war zone areas so why uh, this is not being uh, uh, checked by the uh, law and uh, uh, law forces law and just justice why justice is so blind why justice is so quiet i wonder the deafening silence i'm sorry to say the deafening silence of the uh, um, uh, of of the people who are responsible to create the peace why they are so quiet why they are not speaking up for the rights of the people if i talk about my country pakistan uh, you know that uh, pakistan uh, was uh, founded in 1947 and there were the, it was the biggest migration that the world had from the cross that the millions of uh, you know hundreds of people from india to pakistan and pakistan to india they are uh, going and uh, you know that there was a bloodshed the people who uh, had been living for centuries uh, they become the enemies of each other so that was the biggest migration from india to pakistan and pakistan to india and uh, then the second dilemma which had happened to this subcontinent was that when there was fall of dhaka and uh, that's when again a migration the people migrating from uh, newly formed bangladesh to pakistan though bangladesh was previously the part of uh, uh, pakistan as well i think that when the people they are asking for the rights they should keep one thing in the mind that when you are asking for yourself then keep in the mind that the other people also deserve the same thing if if someone says that it's my right so we should not forget we should not uh, uh, look over that the other people also have gotten the right to speak to survive in this country in this world i'm sorry as far as i'm uh, uh, concerned about pakistan i must say that now the time has changed the girls are being sent to the school but again there are certain issues which are supposed to be highlighted which are supposed to be justified by law and order situation i'm sorry to say that there are laws in pakistan for the rights of women but they are not being executed i don't know why there is a reason that uh, you know that pakistan is an agricultural country that most of the part of pakistan is uh, based on the you know the rural areas where they are having their own laws where they are having their own regulations the bills they are being created they are being uh, passed in the you know that we have a parliament system and the parliament the bills are passed for the uh, uh, survival of women in the rural areas but unfortunately it's not being executed it is not being exercised uh when i'm talking about that it's not only the war which begins in any part of the world it's not only the dilemma and the tragedy of the refugees but also the human trafficking and slavery as well so uh, uh, as far as if i'll talk about the rural areas of pakistan the bills are there the laws are there but but they are not being exercised the one thing that is the owner killing and the the child marriage and the child labor we uh, are a third world country mostly the people over here they are poor they are not having the facilities that is being required that is the right of a human being and uh, again i would say that humanity is above any sort of racial and religious discrimination and uh, 
you should say no to war. Stop designing new weapons. It's high time to create more, uh, you know, educational centers, uh, institutes. Make uh, and uh, as Deepak Kumar is there, he's from India. I always say that there are many friends which I am having in India and Bangladesh. I think that these three uh, offsprings of the partitions, uh, they they should stop wasting their money on war. This is the high time that we should realize that we need to focus India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, because you know that these countries are the uh, offspring of the partition in 1947. We stop wasting our money on war. We stop uh, wasting our emotions on hatred. I think it's high time that we must focus on health and education. We're really uncovering the most like um, terrible thing that happened right now in our society between the um, nations that live in your region. And do you know what? Uh, um, that's very, very difficult to hear and understand that unfortunately we see such a picture all over the world, doesn't matter in which part and of the world you live and in, in which country you still have it, you still see it on the bigger or on a smaller scale, it doesn't matter, but it's present here. And you know what, I'm just like realizing so that's not something um that happen like in one period of time or in one geographic position. No, that's um, absolutely similar symptom to the format of our society that we live in. So, and uh, I truly understand uh, your, like when you say like, we need to stop wars, we need to stop investing our resources, our attention, our money and everything in a development of weapon. And you're absolutely right. And we need to invest those resources that we have in order to um, preserve the human life. Because right now we, um, facing such a like crisis, social crisis in our society. So many thousands of people dying every single day from hunger, from wars, from climatic disasters. Refugee is just like climatic refugees. It's another topic that like we start to see with each day more and more and more. And um, the the reason why we cannot treat this problem, why we cannot find the solution, why we simply cannot agree on and to, to sign the peace treaty, only because in our society, profits stays on the first place, which means we do only those things which brings material profit. But what we need to do as a society, we need to really unite and create the world where the human life will be the highest value, where the format of a society will be creative oriented format, which means we people will do everything possible in order to create life condition suitable for uh, this time, uh, this um, geographical zone, that every single person can live happily and have available all the resources that we don't have to um, migrate just in order to find the uh, resources to survive for, for, uh, for us, for our families. And of course, where worse is just unacceptable and all of types of different violence and of course human trafficking and child labor, it's just unbelievable that we have in our society and we have in such on such a scale. It's just enormous problem. And you were absolutely right that we need to speak up. So we need to like, raise that topic on the different scales and we need to be aware that we are facing this problem and that problem is very very big and like there is no guarantee that you and me and the neighbor members of our families will have to like follow these terrible stories of the refugees and what these people have to go through so uh thank you so much Humo, for um raising 
such an important and difficult at the same time topic. Uh, and I would like to ask Deepak, could you please share your impression and your understanding about the conference and the importance of raising those topics that people presented on this conference? Uh, first of all, namaste from India. And uh, I would like to say that uh, this conference, I think in my first time in my life, I saw that something is going very important. As well, uh, being the youth of the world right now, this is the time to understand why the topic global crisis, the time for the truth has been raised. So this is for each and every viewers, listener, that we should focus what has been shared with us. Because this is the time when we have to understand what is the truth. Even we know that, but we used to ignore. But no, if we want to exist on the Mother Earth, and if we want the, all the biological process to happen on Mother Earth, we have to understand that this conference is the warning for each and everyone. Not only to watch this conference, but to follow and to implement this on the ground is very, very important. I would like to tell each and everyone who is listening, who is watching this conference and watching this feedback of the conference, that we should share this video to each and every one. And let me take one of the example which we are taking in India. So we are sharing this video and we are making the short video of all this and sharing to the so many people living in the rural areas because they are also the part of it. We are explaining the importance of creative society. Why the importance of creative society why we have to implement on ground. So it's not all about making money. It's all about thinking the future of the world, thinking of the future of our animals, thinking the future of our humanity. All these things are very, very important. So we are started doing this and we also, now we are also trying to spread this message of Global Crisis Conference in our local languages. That is very important. In Hindi, it was already translated, but in as even Huma Ma'am already said that in their, in her country and in my country also, 70% of the people, they are residing in rural India. So it's a huge percentage. We have to understand that. And creative society and this conference is important for each and every individual. So how we can spread this message because this is to be implemented by each and every one. Because if we are not going to implement this message, which was told, I think uh, this global con conference of global crisis has covered each and every story of the world. I don't, means this is unbelievable. How the people from 180 countries, the volunteers are coming and 100 languages it has been translated, I think. Now it's time for us, it's time for the youth to cover this language, this conference into thousands of languages. And this is, this is possible if we think so. Whenever we are going in public places, we are going in our colleges, we are going in some any places where we see that five to five people, 10 people, thousands of people. So I think this is very important to discuss about this global crisis and implementation of it. And this is possible. You can cover it in your office work. You can cover in the presentation which you are giving. I think I request each and everyone watching this conference to include this global crisis and the, this topic in your each and every presentation you are giving in your schools, you are giving in your colleges, you are giving in your country or anywhere because this is not the topic, but is the real truth that we have to implement in on the ground on if we want to save the mother earth. And the most important 
I would like to tell you that how we are implementing in India. So we have more than 5,000 slum children. They are studying here. So we are giving free education for them for last eight years. We are going to the rural India. We are empowering the women. So they don't have money, but they have their vision. I think this is the real meaning of creative society. So it's not always we should think about how we can make the profit. So it's always about the think about the humanity. Because if we want to live on Mother Earth, we have to think about it. Otherwise, this is what the conference has already shown that from the, uh, you can say from the, the nature, from the human beings, we all are destroying for the Mother Earth for our own benefit, for our individual benefits. I think we should come together. This is the time to come together because earlier it was no boundary was made on Mother Earth, but we made it, we created it. I think it, it is the time to unite for the humanity and for the survival of entire Mother Earth. So let's come together and we can make it a great change if we want. And the change can be seen right now because it's 180 countries and we believe it, it will not be 180 countries. It will be 200 countries plus and the youth are coming together to make the change because they have started because this is the time for the youth. The future generation is coming. We should leave something for them. It's not about their book is pictures. What was at that time, the children will not read that, will not see in the picture, but we have to save the nature so that they can see that this is the nature, not like the biodiversity we are going in the centuries in the national park to see that this is the species which has already been eradicated or you can say uh, not existing on Mother Earth. So I think we should believe on that. Water crisis is there and so many volcanic and corona. Why these are coming? So this is just because of our human activities. So I think if we created it, if we started making all it, so I think this is the time to make the great solutions and solutions is in our hand. Let's implement this. Let's share this and let's unite together. I think we are going to win. And of course, we will win. And we have started implementing the global crisis topic on uh, different, different places. So this is the time to spread the what is the meaning of creative society, because creative society can change the world. Thank you very much from India. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak, for these powerful wor words. And indeed, we live in a global world. We live in a world uh, where we ex are experiencing uh, global crisis. And global crisis can only be solved by global uniting, global unification of people. You know, no local activities will help whatsoever. We need to unite globally. And this is such a wonderful, uh, such wonderful job that you are doing, you know, spreading this message across, you know, the rural areas, the, the, the people, because it is only the people themselves, the people ourselves, who can do this change. As the history has proven, you know, no organization, no governments uh, have ever solved uh, this issue. You know, how many treaties have been uh, uh, signed? How many petitions? How many uh, acts have been deployed? And everything remains just on a paper. But if we look outside of the window, we see a different story. And a lot of people uh, tend to underestimate, you know, uh, all of these uh, uh, crises that, that we are um, that we are heading uh, now. So that's why it's it's so important uh, to have overview, to be informed, and uh, the international conference and also these international discussions are exactly aimed at being informed. And it is so vital to translate to as many languages as possible, because as you said, there are so many people who don't speak, let's say, the, the main world uh, languages. And uh, it is uh, a truly, let's say, act of, uh, of hero, you know, to volunteer, to spend uh, the free time that, uh, that someone has, you know, just to bring uh, the information, this vital information for everyone to every corner of, of the earth.
And uh, so I would also uh, like to pass the word to uh, Kanu, because I know that Kanu, you've been uh, translating uh, to the language uh, of uh, Igbo. And uh, if you can also uh, share with us uh, your feedbacks uh, from the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, hello, everyone. My greetings from Nigeria. Uh, yes, we uh, have been translated. And the last time we had the conference on the 4th, uh, we, in order to get this message across to uh, people who are in the rural areas too, we uh, translated in Igbo language, which is one of the major languages in Nigeria. And about my impression about the conference, just like when I was listening to all of you, I was listening to Deepak and Huma. Uh, what came to my mind is that, uh, yes, it's also what was said in that conference. Uh, I think is the beautiful thing about the conference. Everyone, you know, has realized that there's need to, you know, break through the barriers imposed by uh, the consciousness that is that which divides us. And um, I was happy to hear uh, the religious bodies, uh, the representative from Pope Francis, he made a call, uh, even quoted the Bible, the Holy Book, uh, where Jesus was uh, said to have you know, referred to all human beings as brothers and said we should all come together as, you know, under one umbrella, under one platform. And Amir Aziz, who is the imam of the, large, of the oldest mosques in Germany, also made the same uh, call, quoting also from the Holy Quran. Uh, he also said the prophet had said all human beings are one and should come under uh, the same umbrella, uh, on the same uh, front. And then that was also the message passed by the scientists when I had uh, one of them, many of them, one of them particularly also said that the crisis we have at hand is beyond national, uh, or let me say nationalism is beyond localities. So it's, it's not something we prefer local or national questions, uh, answers, solutions to. They are problems that require global solution which means there are problems that uh, uh, all of us, every one of us uh, need to, you know, take interest in, just like somebody said, we should see, learn, and then do. It's uh, time that uh, the world look at the global crisis as really global, especially with the climate uh, crisis we are facing. Uh, it's not something, uh, Marita, I heard you saying, it's not something that... Uh, uh, treaties, legis um, uh, conventions, laws, you know, and all those declarations, we've had them, but then they are all uh, paper tigers, you know, they have not solved our problem. So it's something we really need to understand what the real problem is before we could prefer real solutions. And that is one of the things I'm happy about this global crisis, uh, time for the truth. Um, one of the areas I found most interesting is uh, the area that has to do with uh, um, waste pollution and then the solutions that have been given so far and going forward to renewable energy, which is uh, being proffered as alternative. Uh, before now, uh, my thinking also was that, oh, we need a renewable energy. If we take down the uh, carbon emission, and depletion of the ozone layer, uh, you know, reduce the global warming, uh, perhaps uh, uh, we'll be able to take care of the global uh, climate uh, crisis and change. Um, but from what I had and listening to speakers, experts, you know, during the conference, uh, I realized that uh, um, a lot is happening which uh, ordinary people don't have uh, knowledge of. People are just making a profit from uh, others' ignorance. And that was why the question that uh, one of the speakers posed really touched me. He said, if we are fighting over rubbish, referring to waste pollution, if we are fighting over rubbish, uh, what more will we do when we have to distribute a piece of bread to go around uh, each and every one of us? What more will we do? Uh, the waste management or the waste pollution, uh, water pollution, air pollution, 
and then some of the industrial pollutions, the the crisis, the the problems we are having with them. Um, it's good that these things were brought to the fore. You know, we I got to realize that um, contrary to what we are told, even some of those uh, recycled uh, uh, waste products uh, actually are not the recycled uh, uh, products themselves because the percentage of, uh, let's say, the oceanic plastics that are being claimed to be recycled uh, not commensurate with uh, what we are getting. So people are just using, you know, names, stamps, you know, say this is recycled and then we are buying, thinking also that, you know, we are helping to reduce, you know, the climate or global crisis. But unfortunately, we are in, you know, making some other people our pockets, you know, richer. And it's unfortunate that humanity or human uh, could allow ourselves to be dominated by these consumer formats of consciousness that uh, all we are interested in is just uh, profit making at the expense of, uh, of uh, human life, which is the most uh, valuable uh, thing that everybody ought to really you know, focus on. I was here when I had a uh, humor talking about the global crisis and you know, and talking about some of these situations, it's really pathetic. Uh, it's really pathetic. But that is why this conference was quite inspiring to me because I gave opportunity for the world to come together uh, and see that the problem is not really external. The problem is internal, it's with us. You know, our ability to, you know, you know, change this consumer format of society and then replace it with uh, creativity or creative society. Uh, let me talk a little about the renewable energy and um, what I felt uh, very interesting about it. Uh, here in Africa, here in Nigeria, we we talking about using of uh, introduction of renewable energy in the state where I live. We are talking about use of uh, solar power, powers or solar energy. Uh, in the state also, we had one time implemented um, or experimented with uh, wind energy. Uh, I didn't know that they also, uh, the, claim, the claim was that uh, this renewable energy, you know, they, they are what we need, they are the best. Uh, but then they also have their side effects, which we most times don't really take time to consider. So thinking that, oh, they are renewable energy, they are in a green alternative, is, uh, is all about it. But then it requires that we should also look at the other side of their side effect, which was what Alex Z, uh, Alex, if I, uh, uh, the topic he presented, which uh, really got me, you know, interested, we should look at the other side, the side effects of this renewable, renewable energy. And uh, it all goes down to the fact that until humanity infuse our technology with, you know, humanness, you know, until we infuse it with humanity, we work for human and not for profit. We see that we will continue to hide the facts you know, uh, and then uh, obscure so many things and then ordinary people like uh, many of us, we go on believing that, oh, we are, we are making progress when we're actually not making any progress. So it was quite eye-opening, it's quite heartwarming and very inspiring, you know, having attended and listened to the conference and also participated in doing some of the translation too. The translation part was funny because uh, it's the first time uh, who are trying on it, it's, uh, it's like you went to a exam hall, you had prepared your, you prepared for questions you expected to come, and then when you got the question papers, even though there are things you have read, you see, you, you feel like uh, a bit uncomfortable, and then it was a bit strange, but it's the first time, uh, hoping that as we proceed, we will do better, the what you know about, you know, the truth. And we cannot run away from the fact that if we don't implement the creative society, then it is doomed for all of us, God forbid. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I would just like to add to this, you know, that this is just a res another result of uh, the consumer society that we live in, you know, where we are presented these lies or uh, partial truths in media, you know, about uh, these uh, green technologies and stuff like that. And then... Uh, you find out some of the very hard facts, you know, that uh, there, there are, let's say, uh, the solar panels are, uh, cannot uh, be recycled. And usually they end up uh, on uh, waste dumps uh, 
in Africa, you know, and uh, the waste of the solar panels is 300 times uh, more toxic uh, than the nuclear waste. You can see children uh, having to work on these uh, on these uh, waste dumps. Then you you read a study that uh, uh, in uh, by 2030 there will be eight million tons of uh, green waste, and by 2050, 80 million tons uh, of uh, green waste. And all this waste is basically exported, uh, if legally or illegally, from the, let's say, developed countries into the, into the poor countries, you know. And these are just, these are just the hard facts that we, that we unfortunately don't hear in the media. And uh, this is another benefit of uh, these conferences, you know, organized by volunteers in their free time who are not um, um, in any way, you know, sponsored by, by anyone, so can just freely uh, speak the truth. And, and this is the truth. And, uh, you know, uh, another example is, uh, you know, this uh, big business with, uh, with waste, where you can see, for example, this uh, um, uh, biggest waste dump in, in Ghana, where nearly 200,000 tons annually this is, this is the biggest uh, dump of the electronic uh, waste uh, from whole world, from North America, from Europe, you know, from Australia that is being shipped here, you know, and that ends, ends up here. So none of this is uh, being shared with the people. And maybe you can also share it with us uh, if you have uh, some experience, how, is, uh, how this impacts, you know, the health of, uh, of the people living in these areas. Yes, uh, Marit, I will, uh, because, uh, you see, uh, recently, in recent time, there, there has been this um, uh, increase in, you know, people, you know, getting infected and dying of cancer in my part of the world. And, you know, the, the uh, uneducated uh, suggestions that we give to it is, oh, it has to do with, uh, you know, some things that are really, I'll say, mythical. Uh, but, you know, listening to that um, conference, uh, like you rightly have just mentioned, uh, some of these industrial toxic waste that are being uh, exported to uh, Africa and some developing parts of the world, uh, this, this, you know, toxic waste, because they can't be recycled, they go underground and, you know, they are part of the underground water, uh, pollute the underground water that uh, people drink. So you see, it's not a question of saying you are drinking water from the stream or you have, uh, you have a borehole uh, where water is coming from the tap. The fact is that this water has been coming, uh, contaminated underground. So uh, it's, cancer is one of the, the, the results of such uh, contamination. And it's, um, it's just a pity that people are, we spend money on medicine uh, without really knowing that uh, the actual cause is uh, what we thought, uh, what we didn't even think about. And it's unfortunate too that there are the, the, there's a collusion. Uh, uh, humans collude with other humans from other parts of the world, you know, accept bribes uh, to adjust uh, facts and then to adjust documents. And then, you know, you, 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 everything affects everything else. The world today, you might, you know, enjoy the benefits of your riches, but what about your children and grandchildren? If there's no world, who will be there? So yes, uh, Marek, it's, it's really has a great impact, negative impact health-wise in, in my part of the world. And it's good that we're talking about it and that people will get to know you know, that um, some of these waste pollutions, uh, uh, heaps of garbage that you see everywhere. And, you know, it's high time we start doing something about it together. Thank you so much, Kano. I'm just um, very, very thought provoking um, understanding that you shared with us. And um, my next question goes to all our esteemed speaker today. So we faced right now like unprecedented crisis. And um, we already understand that we are all responsible for what we have right now. Because if we are... Um, Passive, if we um, don't act, we support. 
the format that we live in. And uh, how do you think how the situation will change if everyone takes action? Why it is so important that unification comes from people themselves? Okay, maybe let me, since I've already started, uh, you know, one of the things about uh, technology is that uh, we could have the best of technology, but then when there's no humanity, when it is not spiritualized, the technology is as good as uh, useless because uh, uh, it takes uh, humans. Technology is for humans, not humans for technology. So uh, I think... Uh, all this while we had thought that we should leave the problem of uh, you know, the crisis, global crisis to our leaders, but uh, we can't leave the crisis to our leaders. And we too cannot manage this crisis unless we change uh, inwardly. What I mean by changing inwardly is unless we understand that um, the human value, human life should be of the greatest paramount. And then we also understand just like some of the eight principles or foundations of the creative society, that there is need to actually implement them in everything we do as the basis of uh, our society, that profit shouldn't be what defines uh, man's relations to, to man. And that uh, until we share ideas, until we have uh, open and transparent access to information, uh, like uh, Olga was saying initially, until you know, we have sound self-governing systems then we will continue to have this problem of migration and uh, you know brain drain. But if we you know look at ourselves as one big family, humanity is one big family, and then we relate as such, share what we have. This uh, scarcity is artificial. Uh, then I think uh, uh, we will be able to like uh, change our situation. It's not something that our leaders alone can do. It has to be everybody getting involved. Like uh, I said. One of the speakers had said it is um, see, learn, and then do. We have to act, you know, change this consumer format of society with a creative one. That is what I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would also like to ask the same question, Huma, now. And maybe just uh, before that, because one thing, one uh, thought came to my head is uh, uh, I know that uh, you have... Uh, you have grown up in an area, you know, that is that was a uh, mix of uh, two two cultures and two, let's say, nations who have been peaceful living together. But then, from some time, they were kind of they 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 started uh, fighting, and uh, you know, we can see we can see this uh, in in a lot of uh, corners of the world. For example, there is now. You know, you can hear in or, or read in the media, you know, that uh, one country is attacking the other one or wants to attack. And then you hear <clears throat> uh, that 70% uh, of people think that it will attack and they support this, they support that. But uh, to my mind, uh, this is just a manipulation because uh, as, uh, as we have found out from nine years of social interactions with people, 99% of people do not want any war, you know? And I would just like uh, to hear from you, um, what, is the, what is the approach of the ordinary people? I mean, uh, I, I don't, to, to be honest, personally, I don't know anyone who would, who would like to have uh, war or who would like to go uh, to war. And so <clears throat> why is it uh, so important um, for us people, you know, to not be silent, to to speak up and uh, talk about this, you know, to avoid uh, such a such a conflict. Thank you. Um, I was listening to Kona, and you know, everything that you and Kona had described about um, solar panel flexes that. Soon they'll be dumped in Africa and the water is being contaminated. Uh, I really uh, feel very bad when we say that why the people who are living in, in Africa, they're being used as guinea pigs. You know, that all type of uh, experimentations are being carried uh, over there. As far as... Uh, uh, the subcontinent, or you can see the Southeast Asia, is concerned. 
If you will just talk to the ordinary people, no one. I haven't come across with anyone who wants to work. Isn't it? I haven't met any person who needs that, who needs to uh, go into the situation where the, you know, the dropping of the bombs and, um, you know, the, the over their head stone uh, is flying over their heads. It's nothing like that. As I have said, that uh, this pandemic, this COVID-19 situation has revealed that there is no health policy all over the world. Um, so, uh, you know, that it's not like this, that the two, uh, two nations, like India and Pakistan, that is the people of India and Pakistan, or the Bangladesh, they, became an, they become enemies of each other and they started fighting. I think that this is something when they have uh, uh, felt that they have a different identity, different ideologies, then they just, uh, 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 you know, started looking into this uh, uh, formation of the two nation theory. And then afterwards in 1970, after fall of Dhaka, the Bengalis, they have started thinking that uh, um, they are the separate nation. But again, I think that the time has changed. Many people from uh, India, from uh, Pakistan, even from Bangladesh as well, they want to live as a peaceful nation. But the problem is this, then who initiate war? If the people uh, across the borders, they don't want to live in the war. You, know, you see that there is a place in Punjab, it, the part of the Punjab which is in Pakistan, the Sawaga border. I've been there and I just, you know, that it's just a thin line of uh, a thin geographical lines, isn't it? And we can see the people who are living across the border in India and they can also see us. So at that time, the thing that came to my mind that, you know, when they were living together, when they were friends, when they were living like families, uh, that idea that uh, imparted into the minds of the people that they are the two different nations had come into the mind. Okay, it did happen, but I think that we should care, we should respect each other's rights, and we we should not uh, go for any more wars in this area, in this. Uh, subcontinent because we need to work more on education and health. Uh, I have many friends who are living in India and Bangladesh and Nepal as well and in Rohingya as well. So we see that a commoner doesn't want to go on war. A commoner doesn't want to be a refugee. A commoner doesn't want to uh, uh, you know, implement oneself uh, for it is, uh, for the designing of the weapons. Uh, that one thing Kone has said that I really appreciate, that you said that technology is for humans. Humans are not for technology. And uh, the, the things that you have said, that everything is just going on, on, the, on the basis of the money uh, 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 earning, on the basis of, you know, if you uh, have read that uh, Shakespeare's play, uh, The Merchant of Venice, uh, you know, there was a character, Shylock, and he just grabbed the people, uh, grabbed their identity by just uh, giving them the money. And when he uh, uh, won the money back and the person who has taken the money from Shylock, it's a character in the Shakespeare play. So. Uh, in in one of the uh, uh, scene in that motion of Venice, he said that okay, um, if the person is not supposed to uh, send the money back, then I want to have that much flash of uh, that person's body, isn't it? So now you can see that what is this happening? The people are being bribed. They just have been uh, given to the dreams which have got no realities and then when they are just uh, you know entangled 
or they are mesmerized by such uh, uh, dream sellers uh, that isn't it and then afterwards the those sweet dreams they were changed into nightmare and you know that this subcontinent south east asia uh, people who were having uh, you know the fantasies of uh, living in in a dream world living in the world living in the land living in the conditions that they had been bright for that was not really uh, the reality of those such dream but it seems that the wars that uh, you know uh, 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 poverty below uh, uh, the belt and uh, poverty below the level no education facilities no medical facilities they change that fantastic dream that had been uh, uh, you know uh, sold uh, that had been given to their eyes isn't it uh so that that change into nightmare and i wish that uh the people of this uh, subcontinent the people around the world shouldn't be a uh, fantasize shouldn't be uh, you know uh, the, the, the fake dream sellers should not you know uh, disperse the dreams which really uh, have no good uh, realities that is being uh giving to the eyes of the people they have started living into those dreams oh uh, uh, i'm also a commoner i'm not a politician i'm not a bureaucrat here in the country i'm a commoner but most of the time and the people they say that uh, what is this being given to you you are not a rich person uh, you are not having a huge land you are not having expensive lavish living so i said that whatever i speak whatever i feel that has let me stay peacefully in the night and then i welcome the motive this is what the motive of my life and uh, i think that we cannot afford any more war or terrorism uh, the, the the biggest price that pakistan has paid uh, is that is the 16 december aps shower massacre if you know that that the, that is a school uh, of army public school peshawar which is in the province of khyber pakhtunkhwa uh, on 16 december uh, you know in 2014 the school children they were martyred by the terrorist and you know that many many children they were martyred their bodies were not found so i think uh, no nation or no country had paid the price of this that the children they were martyred by the terrorists and yesterday it was the day that when we all were in the memory of that uh, you know the brutal uh, butchery of the terrorists that they invaded a school and they killed the children so i think that we don't want war with not even the people who are living in pakistan or in afghanistan or in india or in bangladesh the communists they want that that this this part of the world has to be healed with peace and harmony and let's speak how to respect the rights of the other it's not only about this that if i'm advocating my rights this i just give a damn to the others right i think that everybody has got a right to live as a free soul here and uh, uh, as far as uh, talking about uh, this uh, global warming and the green effect i really say that when we are saying say uh, saying no to war we should say no to deforestation as well like you know that there was a worst uh, earthquake in 2005 in pakistan in the hilly regions and the upper areas of the pakistan the reason was that of deforestation along with the war and terrorism we should learn to say no to no to deforestation as well i, I think uh, this is enough for the you've been asked me that what does the what does a commoner feel i'm also a common woman i told you but this is what that i think that when i am not biased i am not unfair and not 
unjust to the other people. So this the, the peace of mind is this, that you sleep peacefully without taking any sleeping pill in the night. And one thing I would like to say that it's better to whine about the darkness of the world. Uh, it's better to let your own candle. So I have, uh, you know, enlightened my own candle and I'm dispersing my words. I'm an author and I think that pen is my chair than sword. So I think that if we have started thinking on the same, um, uh, on the same philosophy, that it's better that words are mightier. Words, they they leave more uh, impact than bomb and the weapon than the sword. Then we can change the world into really a creative society. This is what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Huma. And I really like that quote about not fighting the darkness, but instead lighting as many candles as possible. That's what we are trying to do. And that's what we are already doing. Millions of people from around the world share the information, share information about the truthful information about what happening, what facing, what, what kind of problem we have. And of course, sharing the solution that we have right now. And I would like to ask Deepak, Deepak, you do so much and as the you are the greatest example of how youth, young people should act. And could you please share what do you think of how can the situation change in the world if everyone takes action? And why you personally think that creative society is vital for all of us, for all of the humanity? I think... Uh... This is a great question and uh, I think whatever the experience, what I have got from the Creative Society, I started working, I think it's been two years um, associating with the Creative Society project. I, I thought at that time when it was started in India and I think I was interviewed by the both Olga, I was thinking that how is it possible to bring Creative Society and make this possible in India, it's, it's 140 crore population. So I think it was started with a very small number and uh, we were only 10 volunteers working, you know, for each and every conference we don't have at that time. It was very hard. Time was also going on and it was Corona time. But I think what right now we can see at the, at the time when the global crisis, the time for truth was you know, it was shown and uh, great experienced people all across the world coming together and share their vision, facts, and the news, which is to be understood by each and every individual. 180 countries and in 100 languages. This is sure. Now we are ready to change the world. <laughs> Previous year, it was 40 language around, I guess. Uh, I don't remember, but it was. But now it is 100 language. What is the conclusion? It means we are changing. We are implementing the creative society. And the world is ready to change. And the world is accepting the eight foundations of creative society. I'm just... I used to take my mic in, in the village and I used to go uh, to the people who, who never touched the mic, who never seen the media coming in the village. But I think we are going in the village and there's so many volunteers from India coming together to translate, coming together to envision the feeling of creative society and now if 140 crore population can be aware, many now we can see there are many volunteers coming to explain about the creative society. Many guests are coming, they are expressing their vision on creative society. So one thing is very sure, now we have accepted the creative society. This is a great news. And the reason why I'm telling you that we have already seen 
during the conference. And of course, the global crisis, whatever the facts has been taken out, I think this is not a, uh, I think we cannot study in a very small period of time. We have to give time to watch this conference again and again, so that I think we can write a book we can, um, I think uh, we can make some other videos, we can make some small clips, we can uh, make some uh, movies if we can, and if we can go in the village, if we can go in the rural areas, if we go anywhere, we can translate it. Second point, what we are trying to adopt to spread this creative society, and especially about this global conference, that we are going to village to village and we are translating it with some accents i think some you might have heard about the street play okay so we are going and we are also talking some of the youth to come together to explain why this creative society is important and how we can spread it and how we can implement in the society this is very very important and the good news are now we are coming together i think something great can be seen from India. And of course, we can see something great news always from all across the world. So implementation part is going on and uh, this is what we have to create and this is what we have to understand. And if we can, if we can bring this uh, conference in 100 languages, I'm very sure next conference will be more than 150 languages or more than that. I think this is the time to come on the truth and we have to implement it. And of course, we never have to think about, you know, like making profit and everything. And especially youth are ready to create it. This, this is why the Creative Society and the eight foundations are being, you know, like uh, implemented by the many of the youth all across the globe. So let's come together and uh, we are together and we are going to do so many things right now. And this is the time that we have to unify. We have to come together to implement all these. As um, our speaker, honorable speakers also said so many points, which is to be noted in our mind so that we can implement it. But most important, what we have to implement, we have to save our nature. We have to think about global warming and how we can do it. So the solutions are very clear what we are doing in India. So we are going to the village to village. We are going to the slums areas. We are going to the schools. We are organizing the awareness camp based on the environment. We are giving education, free education, but only charges you have to plant a sapling. So one student, one sapling, it means we are covering the world. We are thinking that the world should not be only thought for the profitability. So it's time to save the world. And this is how we can implement, we can plant a tree. So I think small ideas can change the world. And we are implementing it. Thank you very much from India. And thank you. It was a great honor to uh, listen all the, our guests. And thank you very much for organizing this international discussion. Namaste from India. Yeah, many thanks, uh, Deepak. This was a very inspiring speech and a very good example, you know, how you guys in India uh, inspire other people and uh, how one candle can light up uh, 1,000 candles. And this is, um, this is uh, of course, very helpful also for, for other people because creative society a project and this is really the only way out, you know, of this global crisis is the common project of every one of us. There is not you or me or someone else. There's just us people. And we need to understand that no one's going to do it for us. And uh, I really like um, the approach, you know, the active approach of uh, Deepak, you know, uh, reaching out to the young people, to the community, because this is really how we can... Uh, how we can uh, tune to the to the one single wave uh, that can uh, basically, uh, based on this synchronicity, you know, it can uh, help us, you know, gather so much energy that we can really create a, a better world. So that's why I would also like to encourage uh, you, uh, our dear viewers, uh, uh, not to be silent, start to be active. Please send us questions. 
you can uh, you can uh, send any questions uh, to the email info at creativesociety.com you can find us uh, on basically all uh, social media you know including instagram twitter and uh, please start being active uh, at least uh, at least a little bit you know so uh, thank you very much uh, deepak marina the word to you Thank you so much, dear speakers, for sharing with us your ideas, your wisdom. We are very grateful for you that you stay with us today. And dear viewers, we also would like to express our gratitude. And again, like Marek said, please, if you have any question about the conference, question to our esteemed speakers, please send us. We can discuss them on our next uh, international discussion. And thank you so much for being with us today. See you soon at uh, Creative Society channel.